Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's episode of the Cardinal Cast. I am flying solo at the moment. Mr. Mac had a meeting. He is rocking it downstairs, central officing it up. Hi, Facebook. I'm going to change you. So I'm Lonnie Watson, high school counselor, not with Jerry Mac right here next to me. I actually have to have some beef here. I actually asked two students to come on with me today, um, Miss Shay Bailey and Tylee Strothide. I would like you both right here. So you are here beside me um, in my thoughts because I wish you would have joined me today because I wanted them to talk about how amazing our volleyball team is, you guys. First thing before I get into helping students pick careers is I want to talk about um, how amazing our volleyball team is, right? State, let's go. I am so here for it. We are so stinking proud of you guys. Um, the game was amazing for me to keep track with. I used to teach out by Malcolm and Seward, so keeping track of those kids and winning that um, game was amazing. And I believe, if I have this right, that they play Thursday night, 7.30, down on in Lincoln. What an amazing time slot to get. Um, and how, what a grateful experience. So hope they enjoy it. I hope parents, or all the parents and fans who end up going, um, be so very grateful and blessed to be there. Enjoy the experience. We are so, so very proud. So yeah. Hello. Um, hope my volume is good. Hope everything is good on my Facebook live. Hello. I'm not on Instagram right now cause I don't have a second device. So hopefully you are following along with us on Facebook live. Um, we'll be up on YouTube today. Also, I want to tell you what an amazing week we had last week. It was our apply to college event. And so let me just tell you what we did. Monday, we got together and we had just games. And you should have seen my office. Just filled to the brim with college prizes. We have reps every day of the week. So we played a game Monday. It was actually an Instagram game um, where they picked the college. We played a find the mascot game. And then what I want to talk about today is about picking careers. And on Wednesday, we did a two full kind of capstone project. And what we did is we went to CSC in the morning with every senior in our building. So every senior who was here and able to go went on an official CSC visit on Wednesday morning. And then I turned around and I grabbed all our juniors in the building Wednesday afternoon and I took them up to the college and we ate pizza and, and walked around. And then we did a career exploration activity that's hooked to our ASVAB. So today I want to tell you about that activity and I also want to explain why we give the ASVAB at Shattern High School and I also want to um, uh, want to let you know what we do for kids as far as picking careers because I don't know about you guys but the number one question when it comes to like the school counseling office and I think just when you have a teenager is to help them with the question like how do you answer what should I do for a career for the rest of my life, right? That's the big question. In fact, I'm a huge fan of, if you are on Instagram, I follow um, a name, her name is Ralphie, and it's at Simply On Purpose, and it's, she does parenting um, uh, workshops, parenting webinars, audio, and she runs in her Instagram stories a lot of parenting advice, and she has a teenager. Um, and in fact, they, at that level, she even hires a consultant to work one-on-one -on -one with her teenager on figuring out what, what do I want to be when I grow up? It's still the most prevalent question. Um, and so when we do things like last week, apply to college week, we also are not only at answering the question of where do I want to go to college, but what do I want to be? And does it make sense to go to this school and get this degree? will that get me where I want to be? And what, where do I want to be? I'm 18. I'm not sure what I want to do for the rest of my life. So I just want to talk about that a little bit today. Um, I won't talk about it the whole time today. I mean, this is like a three part podcast series for me is talking and working with students on, on careers. Um, here's what I will tell you. We recognize that about four years ago that we were teaching these classes and I was in senior rooms and Mr. Ewing and Mr. Nobling and I and uh, Mrs. Gerard, we were teaching classes called scholarship writing and we, we were writing scholarships 
for kids who didn't know what they wanted to be or what they wanted to do. So we recognized that and we said, okay, here's what we're going to do. We need a class younger. We need a class. And we ended up calling that class freshman transition. And what that class was is a class where our incoming ninth graders can explore what they want to do in the future and maybe build a 10 year. And actually they did build physical 10 year plans. Um, we switched the name of that class last year to just transitions. And, but really when you think about it, it kind of sounds like it's a transition from eighth grade to ninth grade. It is a little bit of that because there's study skills in there, but what it really is, is a transition past 12th grade. So next week I get to go in that class and I get to tell them every opportunity that they have to take high school classes, um, how many college credits they can get while they're in high school. In fact, I just worked on a sheet of paper with a sophomore yesterday. You can get like up to 40 college credits while you're at Shattern High School. I think that's one of the reasons we rank so high in the state of Nebraska is because we have amazing opportunities for our students. So in that class, we talk a little bit about careers. Um, oh man, I could talk the whole time about what we do in that class. However, what I, I want to tell you is on Wednesday, I took all the seniors up on their capstone visit and they asked great questions. And Shattern State does a good job of not making it about Shattern State, but making it about college in general. Um, and so they asked great questions. We did uh, an activity that they call exploring and discovering majors. And so they talked about all the majors they offer and why they offer them. The cool thing about Nebraska schools is they're starting to get smart. Nebraska schools, especially the two-year schools, are not offering as many degrees that the, the job market is declining for. So if you go look at like Southeast Community College in Lincoln or you go and look at Western Nebraska, they're getting rid of the degree offerings that are not serving kids out in, in the job market. I think they're doing a really good job at that. So we did an exploring majors, which is super important. Um, and then our juniors, we, like I said, I bribed them with pizza, right? I mean, come on, because what am I? If I'm not a good school counselor, I'm not bribing kids. And we went over their ASVAB scores. Um, really, the ASVAB um, is used as a military entrance exam. Let's be honest. That's what the ASVAB is. It has a lot of different parts to it. And I'll show you a little uh, piece of paper here. I brought my little sheet that has the scores. It has an exam that's a military entrance exam. But what it also has that I love is career explorations with it. So when you get ASVAB results, I'm going to show the screen here. They look like this. Um, here's all the subjects you take. Here's the percentiles, which is what we look at because this is a score band. Now oh, we don't really care about that, but we look at the percentiles, meaning what percentile did you rank in against all other 11th graders that took it? This person right here, man, in their verbal skills, they were in the 96th percentile. That means they're the top 4% of all kids that took that. So anyway, we look at these scores and we see, what do I need to beef up when it comes to the ACT? What am I sitting pretty at? Do I need to take any different classes? For instance, if my math is really low, probably important that I take more math. We think of it the opposite sometimes, right? My oh, man, I really struggle in math, so I should take less of it. And I should take the easy math class. No, no, the exact opposite, actually. If you're struggling in it, if these scores on the ASVAB are poor in math, English, science, that means take more of it. You want to up those scores, right? Higher ACT means more money, honey. That's what I tell the kids all the time. So we look at ASVAB and we loosely correlate it to the ACT. We look at their military entrance score. That's this one right down here. Um, most branches will take you above a 32. I can't remember if it's a 36. It's different from every branch, but we don't focus on military in that room. We eat pizza and we do career explorations because here's what I want to know. I want to know where the kids scored high, and then I also want to know what their interests are and then hopefully help them make some pairings. And by making pairings, I don't say things like, 
oh, you will be an engineer. That is what you will be for the rest of your life. No, we don't play that game, right? Because I don't even know what I'm going to be for the rest of my life. We do things like, oh, you're interested in this area or your interests align with this or your values, what you enjoy. Man, here are some great options for the skills you have. Uh, so I love it. And I tell kids, I tell you what, if you're a parent of like a junior or senior and you're having this, what am I going to be for the rest of my life talk? I think it's, it's, it's bigger, but it's smaller than that, right? I don't know what I'm going to be for the rest of my life, but I am loving what I'm doing now. I'm following the energy and I'm loving my job. When, when my job starts to suck the energy out of me, it's probably time to start looking for something new, right? And it might be in the same field. It might be, and hopefully that never happens. Hopefully our buckets are filled by work, but they're not always, and they're not always filled by careers. Uh, that's why it's important to get a lot of opportunities when you're young to explore your interests. And I think the biggest things we can do for kids is let them learn about themselves and their values and make sure that whatever kind of field or degrees gives them opportunities to be themselves, right? Because if you are data oriented, you like things in order, you want this, this, this. I tell you what, you shouldn't be a school counselor. Tell you what, if you are type A data organized line, line, line. I like to repeat my, I like, I don't like change. I like to repeat myself. I tell you school counseling, probably not for you, right? Because this job, it changes every day, every second, every minute. Um, so those are the things we talk about. So I'll show you what it looks like. You guys, here's the, so every student at Shattern high school completes a find your interest survey. This also, they do it again on the ACT one. That's a little bit different. And both the ASVAB and the ACT then gives them kind of a color wheel score and um, shows them, you know, what what might fit well for them. So there's six different letters on this that students could be or could end up being for careers. Um, I'm just going to go through them and kind of see if, if any of the parents that are out there listening think that what they would be. Um, the first career chunk that they give us is realistic. So a realistic individuals prefer work activities that include practical hands on, uh, problem solving solutions, designing, building, repairing. Uh, they intend to, they tend to enjoy working outside. Uh, basically realistic types of kids and adults prefer to work with things rather than people, right? Fix, build, um, cook go maybe you're going to western dakota tech to be an electrician oh man we need some plumbers in this town right we've got a few that can't do it all so and we know that that those realistic careers are booming right now or not booming we need them they're they're open um that's a really good field to go into so some of our students were realistic students and it was interesting to see if those were the students that are in like our welding classes our drafting classes woods classes, um, culinary, you know, we offer a lot of these type of classes at Shadron. The next type on this survey is investigative. These individuals prefer anything analytical or intellectual. Uh, they it, prefer studying, investigating, evaluating. They generally prefer to work with ideas rather than with people. So that could be anything from a chemist to a computer network architect. See how we don't, it doesn't fit in a box. A chemist and an IT person for computer networking, totally different degrees and totally different fields. Uh, a pharmacist, medical specialist, fire investigator, forensic science, that's very uh, popular and hard. You have to, you have to be a thinker. Um, the third one is artistic. So these artistic types generally prefer working with ideas rather than things. They, they prefer expressing oneself in original activities like writing, dancing, singing, sculpting. So artistic, you know, that's the one you can kind of, you can pair that decently easy. Um, artistic individuals are interesting in this survey because they, this survey asks a lot of questions like, I prefer following the rules. Now, not artistic. Okay. So in an artistic setting, maybe you're the one that makes the own rules and this, I mean, 
you guys, this we can think of art, we can think of cosmo, uh, cosmetology, you can think of photography, musicians. Um, it could be anything to owning your own type of business and having a clear set of rules for yourself. So that was fun. Uh, social is the next one. I am 99.9% .9 social every time I take this, this test. Uh, social, you like to work with people, right? So if you are end up being social on this career exploration, um, you'd rather work with people than work with objects, machines, or data. They generally require personal interaction and communication skills and abilities. So, I mean, you guys, this could be everything from a teacher to a coach to um, a fitness trainer, right? Personal trainers have to work with people every day. Coaching, EMT, a paramedic has to be there with people every day. And nursing nursing would be another great example of you've got to have some smarts but you also have to like to work with people every day because i just had a student tell me that there's a lot of people at the nursing home that push the call button because they just need someone to talk to so some of those same skills that it takes to be a counselor or a teacher in those social um the last two enterprising i think this is interesting enterprising types prefer to work with people and ideas rather than things uh, they enjoy work activities as sales, supervision, business management. They like work that's fast paced and high risk. So that could say something to your core values as well and what you enjoy. Uh, I mean, you guys, anyone who owns their own business can be enterprising. Also, you could be working, um, you know, event planning, working for a business in any of these degrees. You could be anything from an air traffic controller to a lawyer. I mean, there's pages and pages. I'm just picking a few of these off the list. And then the last one was conventional type of careers. And I want to think conventional type of careers are the careers that are a little bit more repetitive, take a lot of organization, data management, and detail oriented. So we have a lot of students and it's fun because once they get through, when the, by the time they're 18, they're pretty set in what they like. And we have students who, you know, they like routine. So finding jobs that work um, and some of these accounting, business, fire inspector, loan officer, uh, paralegal, social science. I mean, it just goes on and on. But then the, the key is knowing what you like and where your interests lie. Um, and finding something within the realm that lets you be data oriented because that's where you thrive. So, so I think for me, we could take every career skill aptitude strength finder test in the world. And we do, we do, we give them all. I'm obsessed with them. We do real colors. We do FYI. We do the career colors with ACT. Um, I said real colors already. We do gobs of them. We do Nebraska Career Connections and the values. We do a ton of them because I think the best thing I can do is help kids learn who they are and what kind of pace of life they want to live and what matches their values and then hopefully keep helping them find something that fills that energy bucket, right? And then all they have to do when they get into college is follow the energy. They might not have to declare right away. They might take a bunch of different classes based on um, what they like or what their interests are and then they kind of start following where the energy leads them right not just because I like that professor or that class was hard or that was easy is oh no that led to an internship which led to an after-school program which I loved going to every day so I know that I can work with kids and that won't drain me that fills my bucket um, gives me energy rather than takes energy away so those are the types of things we're working on with kids and making career choices, answering the, what the heck do I want to be for the rest of my life? And you know, when we think of big picture, it's paralyzing. At least it is for me. And I think it is for students when you're 16, 17, 18. Um, the big picture can be paralyzing. It can put you in a box. Um, it can feel just exhausting but I always tell kids we we eat an elephant one bite at a time and with those bites with careers picking careers picking degrees uh, picking if you even want to go to college picking if you want to go to a four-year or two-year it's all about taking one bite at a time figuring out who you are what you like getting some experience maybe it's a part-time job maybe it's some job shadowing that 
kids can set up, the parents can set up, I can help set up. It's all about knowing connections and who can take the kiddos um, and seeing, does that fill my bucket? Did that give me energy going to that or did it deplete me? Uh, I had a student who is an artistic student but also very detail oriented and could go either way and the student had an artistic thing to do a performance and was pretty nervous about it and was kind of trying to make that choice of do I want to study this artistic thing or do I want to go and study um, something detail oriented because that's you know kind of what she she's good at both and I said try them both Try them both and follow your energy. I know you're nervous for your performance. After it, really take time to reflect and say, did that fill my energy bucket? Do I feel more energized now and positive now after doing it? If so, I better keep pursuing this. If not, maybe that's not for me and that's okay. Oh, Kathy, hello. Yes, me too. It, Kathy, if you're not on Facebook Live, Kathy just wrote, even at my age, it scares me too. Too, Kathy. I don't know. I don't know what I want to. I don't. What if I'm a go, go, go person? Um, I don't know what I'll do for the rest of my life. I, I hope I do this for a really long time. But um, <coughs> the one thing I do know about degrees is mine have given me more opportunities rather than less. And that's what I tell kiddos. Uh, but it's it's a double edged sword anymore because college is so expensive that we have to be smart and educated with our choices. And we have to make sure, and that's why we're so blessed to live where we are, because we can get a two or four year education in our state for minimal debt, minimal to no debt if our kids are really grinding at scholarships, if they're putting themselves in good positions with their activities and with their grades. Um, I just think we are so blessed. And even if it's not a degree, maybe if it's just a certification, right? Maybe if um, each one of our kids walk out of uh, the year after high school or two years after high school with some sort of special skill that they can give to the world until they find their energy on what they want to do. Uh, so, yeah, it scares me too, and I think that's okay. I think that's good, and I think it's healthy, and I think it just means our kids want to grow, and us as adults, as their parents, we, we also want to grow, right? It doesn't matter... Um, what age we get, we want to still have dreams and still have personal and professional growth. And I think that's all part of like following our energy in our season of life and, and where it leads us. Um, I absolutely love that because I feel the same way. So Wednesday, I got off track. I'm passionate about this. Went up to the college. We did the career or the, the major exploration came back, I grabbed the juniors, we went back up to the college, and we did this, um, which is the find your interests. We did the FYI career, so if you have a junior, ask them what they were. Um, when your kid is a junior, know that I will do that activity with them as well. When they are freshmen, I am doing the Nebraska Career Connections now and doing a four-year planning. Mrs. Gerard does a 10-year plan with them, so if you have um, a sophomore through senior in this building, they have a 10-year plan, and they should share that with you. It doesn't it doesn't have to be set in stone. It changes all the time based on their energy, and I'm okay with that. It's every time we ask students to, to talk about these and do these interest surveys and pair them with their skills and strengths, we are making them think harder about who they are, and hopefully that will just lead into better choices when it comes to post high school, post secondary transition, uh, finding the fit that works best for them. Uh, I know if Mr. Mack were able to be here, he would do a pretty darn big talk on, he's pragmatic, you guys. He is, I'm more of like a follow your energies. He's a, he's a passions can be fickle kind of guy. And I kind of agree with him. So we might be super passionate about um, our whatever it is, I don't even want to say anything to offend anybody, but maybe it's my juggling. I am super passionate about my juggling, but pursuing it for the next 10 years out of high school might not be lucrative, and I need to know that. So substitute juggling for 
um, something really oversaturated in the market. I'm going to use an example. I'm, I hope I don't offend anyone. Please, if you egg my house or egg my car, just leave some eggs for my son Grant because he loves eggs. Uh, but I, I will tell you one thing. I know students who are going to get certain graphic design majors are having a hard time finding graphic design gigs unless they're entrepreneurial, right? So unless they're like, I am willing to hang my own shingle, I'm going to go ahead and start my own business and hire people out and do everyone's, then they're amazing, right? But if they're more along the lines of, oh, I just like somebody to hire me for this, it's just not as lucrative, right? There's not as many jobs for some of those, some of those degrees. So I know if Mr. Mack was here, he'd want me to touch a little bit about passions can be fickle. Um, if you get a chance, and I should tag some of these below, Mike Rowe, have you guys ever heard of Mike Rowe? He is the guy who ran that show, Dirty Jobs. And basically, he has spent the last decade trying to tell people that you can make a really, really good living and a great life and good business off a lot of things that people don't want to do because they think it's dirty or gross or uneducated professions, right? So, it, and it's interesting because there's all these careers out there, even beyond the idea of like what he calls dirty jobs, beyond the idea, there's a degree, you guys, at Southeast Community College called non-destructive metal testing. Don't ask me what they do. I have no idea what they do. But I do know that those kids that come out of there are driving big old trucks, way nicer vehicles than me, and they have way less degrees and spend less money for theirs. So I know there's a lot of opportunities out there beyond this four-year degree, you know, beyond what we normally see as a traditional uh, post-secondary avenue, okay? So I know Mr. Mack would want me to talk a little bit about that. If you get a chance, Mike Rowe has some videos online. They're fabulous. I love it. Again, I think it's a little bit of a double-edged sword because Mike Rowe was an opera singer for a while, you guys. So he followed his first passion and then he changed where the energy changed, right? So I think he's in a better example of he tells you not to follow your passion, but I kind of think he's a better example of like follow it as far as it will take you until you need to make an adjustment. And so he's in, interesting. Micro, dirty jobs, his videos are fabulous if you get a chance to. Um, the other per person I was saying is Simply On Purpose on Instagram. Her name is... Um, now it just left me. I'm going to think about it here real quick. But she is fabulous. Uh, she is also working with teenagers all the time on that big, what do I want to do for the rest of my life question. So Wednesday, we did that. We did it twofold with the seniors and the juniors. Um, they got to take these home. So that is pretty fun. And you guys, in the these are kind of fun. And you can find some of these online. They just have lists of jobs. I like the idea of figuring out if you are investigative or realistic or social or artistic more than I like the idea of I should see this job. Um, I do want to talk a little bit about job shadowing before I leave you. This is going to be a shorter one for me since I am solo. Um, job shadowing is amazing. It is amazing opportunity for kids to see what really happens at work. And I get asked all the time, how do we go about setting job shadowing up? And you guys, just set it up. If you know somebody, it, the best thing you could do is you just call them. I'll give them the day for free any day they want to go job shadow. Um, if you need help, if you don't know somebody, you have that kid come to me and we'll try to figure it out. I, I will be honest, I am not the expert of calling everyone because I don't have all those connections either all the time, but I usually know somebody who knows somebody. So for instance, if I Want, have a kid who wants to job shadow something specific in health professions, I get Crystal Sprock on the phone or email and she has those connections for me to almost everyone in town. In fact, next week on Monday, she's taking a group of, I think it's around, ooh, 11 kids, or I think it's more than that, to a trauma job shadow experience in Scott's Bluff. It's going to be phenomenal. So, Again, I have kids who are interested in agriculture. I just get my good friend, Mr. John Cogdill over here and say, or, or Miss Moore and say, hey, I'm not sure about this area. What do you think? In fact, I had a kid just the other day come and say, 
what about drones? That's kind of like the world's kind of heading that way in agriculture, aren't they? And I said, well, it sure seems like it to me. I mean, sitting, I don't know. I don't know anything about drones and agriculture, but I do know they see a lot flying around and they're doing pictures and stuff. Well, sure as heck, we get on University of Nebraska Omaha's website, just dialed up my friend Google and found out that uh, non-manned aircraft is a degree you can get in Omaha. So that was pretty awesome as well. Now, I don't know who we could find him to job shadow. We might have to make connections outside of our town, our community. But again, I we get some people on the line, Mr. Cogdell, um, some of our friends at John Deere or Butler Ag, and we can set that kid up with job shadowing. We give a day off or a few days off for kids to go do that. We don't necessarily excuse them from all their work at school. So it would just be like a school activity. Get your work done ahead of time, turn it in, you go do your thing for the day. And maybe you do it for multiple days. We, we love that. We fully support it. Um, we want students to be able to do that. We just want to make sure parents are involved because lo logistical and transportation can just be an issue getting back and forth. When they're old enough to drive themselves, that works. Also, age can be an issue with job shadowing and confidentiality. In health professions, they might have to do HIPAA training, and we can help them do that at school. There's some online quizzes. Um, there's some professions that just don't fit well for job shadowing, right? Like, how are you ever going to shadow an attorney in client confidential meetings? It's just not going to happen. So sometimes you have to take risks with degrees and you have to get the opportunities. Maybe you work the front desk and you answer phones um, to get the experience that you need or that you're able to to make an educated decision. So experience trumps all, right? Getting, getting some experience in the workforce, getting some experience in different fields. Um, you can never take too many risks with job shadowing. I mean, that is just an easy way you don't ever have to really quit that right you're just visiting our local vets have been phenomenal with job shouting with all, all of our people are are great um so yeah we try to do a lot for kids when it comes to career explorations if you ever solve the problem or answer the what am i going to be for the rest of my life um you fire that away let's write a book together i think it's about following your energy I think it's about living in the season of life you're in. And if you've got some energy to do something different, then by all means do it. I tell kids all the time, if they're not ready to make a career decision or a decision on a degree, and they're just not sure that they're ready for the na that next step, I want to get them in touch with my ladies at AmeriCorps. Because in AmeriCorps program, that's taking a gap year. Really, it's nine months of your life. And you travel every six weeks to a new place in the country, in the United States, and they put you to work. Whatever is needed, they put you to work there. So maybe there's a hurricane um, on the East Coast. And so you're going to, for six weeks, go work with the American Red Cross. And maybe when you're there with the American Red Cross, they're going to give you a job that fits your skills. Like if you're super organized, maybe you're trying to locate families. Right? You're keeping details of where people are and record keeping. If you're like a people person, maybe you're handing out blankets and you're going and, and meeting people's needs and talking to people and knocking on doors. Um, so yeah, then maybe six weeks later, they travel you to the south and you're tutoring underprivileged students or homeless students. Or maybe six weeks later, they travel you to a place in... Yellowstone National Park where they need some trails worked on or some um, some cabins rebuilt. So every six weeks they travel you. What an amazing. And then they give you a scholarship when you're done, you guys. AmeriCorps does. At the end of the day, they give you a scholarship that says here's seven grand to go to whatever school you want to and to follow your energy and get whatever degree interests you. So that's a really cool program. I love that for students who don't quite, they're just not quite ready to make a decision yet on a degree, which is okay when you go to college. If you're committed on education, by all means, go get an education. Uh, but AmeriCorps is just a pretty cool gap program if you're not. So if you're just not ready to make that quite of an investment yet. So um, I see it both ways. I see 
an education is one of those things that nobody can take away from me. My degrees, nobody can take them away from me. I'm very, very proud of them. But it is an awful lot of money if you're not committed to a certain degree path, right? Or if you don't know. Um, so I see I see both ways about being smart, doing lots of strengths finder, interest inventories. We do them all. Ask your kids about them at home. If they say, oh, yeah, nothing, I got them here. I'll keep them all. Um, we have a ton of fun. Like I said, I'm a big nerd about all of it. This podcast, I'm going to wrap it up right now, but I could talk about this for days. So if anyone ever wants to give me a buzz, drop me an email at lonnie.watson at shatteredschools.net. Talk about that big daunting question, what I want to be for the rest of my life. I am so here for it. I have so much, so many more questions than I have answers, but, but a lot of good things that we're working with kids on at the high school. Mrs. Gerard's a really good resource for this as well. I think the next time we talk about this, I'm going to bring her as a guest on this podcast so she can tell you about that transitions class and what the freshmen are doing in there specifically when it comes to maybe what degree I might want to pursue in the future or what kind of skills and training I might need. The last plug I'm going to make here, uh, we had so much fun on Wednesday. We gave out so much prizes last week. All of our seniors, you guys, we are 100% of Shadron High School kids have applied to at least one college does not mean 100% will go. It just means they know how to do it now, and they're not as scared. 100% have visited a campus because we went together. Um, those are big feats. We, I think we gave almost everyone prizes last week. It was super fun. We still have some gift cards to draw. I have to give props to my man, Sergeant Bubba Page, up at the College Armory for the National Guard. He let us come up here, and he ran the show on the entrance interest inventory, and he also... Uh, Threw out some great perks for kids if they do want to join the National Guard. Um, and again, I'm going to have him come and speak to that someday. Um, not that Shattered High School, we don't promote it by any means. Uh, we don't discredit it. It's just an opportunity, amazing opportunity for kids who are truly interested. Like I said, following their energy. And if serving their country is part of their, um, their path or the energy they feel Holy cow, he's got some money, honey. He's got signing bonuses. He's got career opportunities. He is the man. And he was so nice to the kids. I keep saying it's the last thing I'm going to say, but the truly, the last thing I'm going to say is I cannot believe how amazing our Shadron High School kids are. I took two groups of kids, so I took over 120 kids by myself, just me, five, five little old me, to the campus on Wednesday. And you would not believe how respectful and engaged our Shattern High School kids were the whole time. And, you know, we are adults and we bore them from time to time. But those kids did not play on their phone the whole time. They were engaged, participating, active. In fact, that junior class in the ASVAB was the most particip participatory um, in the career exploration that I have ever seen. So it's like... We're just getting better and better. I can't believe it. Kudos to our kids. That's all you guys. That's nothing we're doing. Um, all you guys out there, students and our parents, we love you. I uh, truly, and I, I know the kids are like, Mrs. Watson, you just say that stuff all the time. I truly, truly mean it. They were fabulous. So I'm very impressed, very proud to be a Cardinal. I'm going to be proud to be a Cardinal Thursday night when I see our ladies on the floor in Lincoln go dominate. I was talking about how amazing of a fall it's been with our kids, with our activities, with our clubs. Um, I heard our FBLA kids served at the hospital banquet the other night, appreciation, and that they just did a great job. So super proud of everything Shattern's doing right now. Um, I am Mrs. Watson, high school counselor, usually here with somebody. None of the volleyball players wanted to hang out with me today. Um, I caught them off guard, so <laughs> they said no thanks. Mr. Mack is busy. It is just me. I appreciate everyone joining on YouTube and on Facebook. Sorry, Instagram. I failed you today. I will be back next week. Actually, next week on Tuesday, we're going to have a surprise teacher guest. So, And I don't know if it'll be a surprise. I might pump it out to the world. But it's going to be really great. Um, and we're going to have a surprise teacher guest. And I think what we're going to talk about next week is school safety. So chime in with us. Uh, really glad to have you. Thank you for commenting, Kathy. You're the best. All right, everyone take care. Have a great Tuesday.